uh, the EU and the UK saying they have reached a draft Brexit deal. Obviously, much more to come on this, but Willem Marx is standing by. He's got more on the situation right now. Willem, what can you tell us? The executive branch, Becky, of the European Union, the European Commission, they have agreed with the UK that they would like to see this move forward. In about an hour's time, we'll have European leaders arriving here inside what's known as the EU Council for their relatively regular meeting. Brexit, top of the agenda. Boris Johnson likely to talk to them, to make his pitch, to say, we now have an agreement. Please, can you endorse it? And if those 27 other heads of state say they're happy with it, they will move on. And potentially, we could see the British Parliament voting on it as soon as Saturday. The challenge there remains, though, for Prime Minister Boris Johnson. He doesn't have a clear majority. So if this small Northern Irish party that's so often proven to be a thorn in a prime minister's side decide, as they've said again this morning, they're not happy with the, with the way the deal has turned out, we could see that majority vanish. And once again, without a parliamentary approval in Westminster for any agreement, it's going to be incredibly challenging for this process to end by October 31st, which right now is the current deadline. Willem, again, Junker, as you mentioned, in support of this, he's saying that he's going to recommend that the 27 EU nations actually endorse that deal during the summit later today. Boris Johnson making some positive tweets about this, too, saying it's a great new deal. But you're right to bring up this concern that he doesn't necessarily have the votes in Parliament just yet. <coughs> when do you think we'll have a better idea of this? How quickly can this vote counting take place? So the challenge is, over the next 48 hours, while you've got this meeting going on here in Brussels, is that the <coughs> Prime Minister's team back in Downing Street and in Westminster will be trying to see whether they can guarantee not only all of the votes inside the Conservative Party, not only 21 further votes from former Conservative Party members that they kicked out last month, also this 10 subset of the DUP, this Northern Irish Party, and then potentially they'd also need some of the Labour Opposition Party members to vote in favour of the deal. Some of them telling me, though, they would only do that if approval of this deal was attached to a second confirmatory referendum, whereby essentially you'd see a second referendum pitching this deal against another option, which would be to remain inside the EU. That could drag on for many more months. And so Boris Johnson's insistence he would leave October 31st might again be challenged on that front. What would the EU's response be if, if there was such a movement passed in Parliament to, demanding a second referendum? unclear in terms of what would be the timeline around that. They've often said, many of the European leaders, Becky, they'd, they'd like, like to see yeah. the UK stay inside the European Union. So if a referendum delivered that, that might be something that would be music to Emmanuel Macron's ears, for instance, the French president. In terms of what happens this Saturday in Parliament, the legislation that already exists means that if a deal wasn't concluded by today that Parliament was happy with, then they would force the Prime Minister to ask for an extension till late January. We could see another four-month delay to this Brexit process. He might turn around and say to the European counterparts here, the other leaders, can we make it a bit shorter? I think we're there, almost there. Give me another few weeks. Let's see if we can get the technical details sorted out, and I'll try and get my parliament back on side. Obviously, the market reaction is uh, one of pushing stocks a little bit higher, uh, both uh, in the United States and in Europe right now. Um, how tentative do you think any of this is? Well, this is the real challenge, of course, is looking at how the pound behaves in response to all of this. Because, of course, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a huge amount of volatility. And there's not been any certainty about what that pound will do in terms of its price against the dollar, against the euro. A lot of, lot of questions around how certain people are, traders in particular, that the parliament will come back and approve this. Willem, thank you very much. As you mentioned this, the pound right now is up by just over half a percent against the dollar. Again, Willem Marks.